This is another in a series of uh, articles and videos I'm making for uh, LinkedIn and a variety of other places. The specifics of this tutorial are how to use Mesh Mixer to uh, generate your own supports. Why would you do that? Why not use the slicer's uh, ability to do that? A lot of times, some of the less uh, sophisticated slicers, um, uh, and in essence, the, the free ones, uh, don't generate particularly good supports for a variety of reasons. Um, they don't have a lot of control over the thickness, the angle, uh, the density, and so on. And you gener start generating uh, prints with supports that work, but uh, one, very difficult to remove, and two, uh, they take up, a they use a lot of plastic, and they can actually double, triple a print, uh, unless you've got Simplify 3D, which has some of the best uh, support structures um, and support structures tools in the industry. Uh, you can use Mesh Mixer, which is a free open source um, program. I use it all the time to generate my own STLs with supports, with or without, with, with or without. And I found that they actually print a lot faster. There are downsides, but the downsides are minimal if you know what you're doing. Anyway, here's Winnie, and we take a look at Winnie. Take a look at that lovely wireframe. Beautiful. Our polygons are equilateral triangles. And what we do to generate supports, uh, we go to the print menu. And we can zoom in on Winston. We'll take a side view of him. And what we'll do is we'll click on the support button. And it's on the bottom here. Click on the tool. And you will see that Mesh Mixer will actually highlight the sections that it believes, based on some presets, uh, it should uh, generate supports. Now, and if we actually look here, you can see on some of the advanced support options where it gets the data on that. Um, for example, um, you'll notice under here where we see the red areas, uh, that is a preset angle. Uh, that is that it is using uh, based on the angle threshold and if we were to change that it would actually broaden or reduce the overhang section that it thinks is required uh, for supports so let's do this let us generate a support based on some of the presets first of all we'll do a thicker one a replicated three millimeter and we click on generate support let's give it a few seconds uh, I don't have the fastest MacBook and if we uh, watch and watch, we'll see that it generates it fairly quickly. And once we have these generated, we have the ability to uh, manipulate, add more, uh, and so on. Which sometimes when it, when it generates these, they're not practical. Uh, they can generate supports that have incredibly sharp angles that themselves are, uh, they will fail during a print. Let's take a look at this real, let's take a quick look from the front. Now you can see with this one, the angles on it actually are actually fairly good, and th this would print it. But what you could do here, if you were worried about the front, is you could actually add another support right in the front, so you, you could support Winston. Now obviously in this instance, these are probably way too uh, sharp an angle. Uh, but you see the point. Uh, you could add some extra ones down here if you feel like they're not going to print properly, uh, and so on. Now these are fairly thick, obviously, um, so what we could do is we can change these for a thinner, we use the 2mm, and I've actually done this multiple times, and again, once it generates the supports, you can uh, manipulate them by adding them, you can change the point of contact, how thick that point of contact is, whether it's a millimeter, 2 millimeters. the thicker they are, obviously, the point of contact. Uh, the uh, more difficult it can be to remove them but I will tell you this that I find these to be a lot easier to remove than supports from say Cura, Slicer and so on and again there aren't too many uh, controls in those particular applications for generating support and you, it's, it's a one fits all there are obviously uh, two variances that are very good in those programs um, support on the build plate and support outside the build plate. So anything that's over a build plate uh, will get support, and anything that's over outside doesn't. And that can 
you see here I'm going to actually add an extra line there. We'll come down, if it, assuming it allows me to do that from the side. It is a bit finicky. But here we go. I am struggling right now to get my mouse to work. Okay. Not sure why Winston's not cooperating. But there you go. Anyway, not the greatest. <laughs> there you go. You see that in the front. Um, and so on. And you can delete those and you can start all over again. And real quick in the advanced support, uh, you can optimize uh, the offset. Uh, although either the minimum offset uh, in terms of the, the, the point and the angle, uh, the height of the base, you can see on the bottom there's like a little flange that it sits on and so on. Uh, what you do then is you export it as a an STL or whatever with the, you click on done, and there you go, Winston with his supports, you're going to export it. And in this instance, I would export it as an STL with the supports, reference it, and 